Hello, and welcome back to Interstates. I have finally returned with the second season after a very long wait. What? I was only gone two months? The time gap between the Interstate 57 and Interstate 80 videos was longer than that. Oh, well, I'm back with Season 2, and for the first episode, we'll be taking a look at what might possibly be the most important east-to-west interstate in the entire country, Interstate 70. I'm gonna warn you right now, this is gonna be a long episode, and you might want to grab some popcorn before we start. I-70 runs just under 2,200 miles between Cove Fort, Utah and Baltimore, Maryland. It travels through the center of the country and connects the major cities of Denver, Topeka, Kansas City, St. Louis, Indianapolis, Dayton, Columbus, and Baltimore. Being technically both the oldest and newest interstate in the original design plans, 70 has quite a bit of interesting history behind it. The first parts of 70, and the interstate system as a whole, were built in Kansas and Missouri around the Kansas City area. 70 was originally planned to end at Denver, but was extended to Cove Fort to better connect Southern California with the Northeast. Finally, the last bit of 70, and the original interstate system design, was completed in Colorado in 1992. Alrighty, you ready? Let's start the route. Interstate 70's western end is at a trumpet interchange with Interstate 15 outside of Cove Fort, Utah. Almost immediately after this, it has an exit with State Route 161 for Cove Fort, about a mile to the east. About 20 miles later, 70 meets US Route 89 outside of Sevier. From here, there are exits in Joseph, Elsinore, Richfield, and Aurora. Beyond Aurora is Salina, where US 89 continues north off of I-70. We also gain a concurrency with US Route 50. After Salina, we hit a stretch of I-70 where there are quite literally no cities to speak of. Eventually, however, we reach Green River where we add two more routes to our concurrency, US Route 6 and US Route 191. However, 191 leaves a few miles later in Crescent Junction. Finally, we meet Route 128 in Cisco before continuing with US Routes 50 and 6 into the state of Colorado. I-70 kinda weaves its way around the land for the first few miles of Colorado. Eventually, however, we reach Loma, where US Route 50 leaves the concurrency. In Grand Junction, arguably the first sizable city we've met so far, US Route 6 leaves I-70 momentarily, but then rejoins it on the east side of the city shortly after. 70 then meets the small towns of Debec, Parachute, and Rolison. In Rifle, US Route 6 leaves 70 again, and we meet State Route 13. We also travel through the small towns of Antlers, Silt, and Newcastle. In Chakra, US 6 leaves 70 for a third time. We also meet Route 82 in Glenwood Springs. US 6 can't seem to make up its mind, because in Dotsero, 6 leave I-70 yet again. We travel through the cities of Gypsum, Eagle, Wolcott, Edwards, and Avon. Outside of Minturn, US 6 not only joins 70 again, but US 24 begins heading southwest. From here, 70 and 6 travel through the towns of Vale, Copper Mountain, and Frisco. In Silverthorne, we meet Route 9, as well as US 6, which, unsurprisingly, gets back onto its own road again. US 6, however, rejoins 70 a few miles later. From here, 70 and 6 exit in the towns of Silver Plume and Georgetown. In Lawson, 70 meets another US route that we will be seeing a lot of from here on out. US Route 40 joins 70 and 6 in Lawson, and the three continue through Idaho Springs. However, both US 6 and US 40 get off of 70 just east of Idaho Springs. I-70, now alone, parallels US-40 into Genesee, where I-70 meets Colorado-470, an unfinished beltway around Denver. 70 turns northeast, meeting, but not joining US-6, before turning due east to head back through downtown Denver. In Arvada, just outside of Denver, I-70 meets the west end of western I-76. Now in downtown Denver, I-70 meets another major I, Interstate 25. In Central Park, Interstate 270 ends at 70, and US-36 joins us. We then meet Interstate 225 shortly after. Finally, as we leave Denver, or moreover at this point, Aurora, US-40 rejoins 70 as well as US-287, and we meet 470 again. In Watkins, we meet State Route 36, not to be confused with US Route 36, which is still concurrent with 70. In Bennett, we meet Route 79. Finally, in Byers, we not only meet State Route 36, but US-36 also leaves I-70. Still concurrent with US-40 and 287, I-70 travels through the extremely small towns of Peoria, Deer Trail, and Agate. Or is it Agate? We then meet Route 86 in the middle of nowhere. Now, we enter the bane of control cities everywhere. Lyman, Colorado. In Lyman, we meet State Route 71. However, more importantly, US 40 and 287 leave I-70 and US 24 joins us. 70 and 24 meet the small towns of Genoa, Ariba, Flagler, and Seibert, where US 24 momentarily leaves the concurrency. From here, we pass through Vona, Stratton, Bethune, and Burlington where we not only meet US-385, but also rejoin US-24 again. And that's it for Colorado. We now move on to our third state. We enter Kansas with an exit for Colorado, 
which it took me way too long to realize was just a combination of the names Kansas and Colorado. We meet State Route 27 in Goodland, and US 24 leaves I-70 for good in Colby, where we also meet State Route 25. After Colby, 70 takes a rather sudden turn to the south, where we meet US 83 north of Oakley. In Oakley, US 40 rejoins 70, as well as another sudden turn back to facing due east again. From here, we meet Route 23 in Grainfield, US 283 in Wakini, and US 183 in Hayes. After this, 70 exits in the small towns of Gorham, Russell, where we meet US 281, Bunker Hill, Dorrance, Wilson, and Ellsworth, where we meet State Routes 14 and 156. Finally, after many, many miles of flatland and two-lane routes, we finally meet another interstate. Interstate 135 is an I-35 spur route that, from here, is used to access Wichita, which we don't actually go through on I-70. We also meet US 81 North, as well as a few smaller exits in Salina. From Salina, we exit in Solomon, Abilene, where we meet State Route 15, Detroit, where we meet K-43, and Chapman. We also enter Junction City, which, true to its name, contains a lot of junctions. We first exit with US 77, which is then followed by State Route 57, which is then followed by State Route 18. From here, we meet a bunch of smaller state routes before nearing Topeka. To start off, we meet State Route 4. This is then followed by Interstate 470 and US Route 75 before entering downtown Topeka, which is then followed by State Route 4 and I-470 again, alongside a loss of concurrency with US 40, which that's not the first time that's happened. Get your wallets ready, folks, as we are now on the Kansas Turnpike, which we will stay on until the state line. We meet US 40 in Big Springs, followed shortly after by K-10 and US 59 in Lawrence. We then travel through some fields before meeting US 73 and K-7 in Bonner Springs, where we also gain concurrency with US 40 again. After Bonner Springs, we meet the Kansas City Beltway, or Interstate 435. We also meet Interstate 635 in Kansas City, Kansas, before starting a very short-lived concurrency with US Route 69. We then swap concurrencies as US 69 heads north to Fairfax, and we pick up US 169. Also crammed into the downtown KCK is an exit with I-670, a bypass of 70 into Missouri. We also have this abomination of an exit before crossing into downtown Kansas City, Missouri, as well as the state of Missouri itself. Here we meet a literal spaghetti interchange with a metric ton of interstates and routes thrown into the mix. First, we become concurrent with Interstate 35, marking yet another major interstate off the route list. Next, we lose concurrency with US 169, meet Missouri Route 9, lose concurrency with Interstate 35, and meet Interstate 29 in the same exit, start and lose concurrency with US Route 71 in the same mile, and meet the other end of I-670. All of this in the span of just under 3 miles. From here, we lose concurrency with US Route 40, cross the Blue River, and then meet Interstate 435 again. We also exit, but do not join US Route 40, and have a cloverleaf exit with Interstate 470 and Missouri Route 291 in Lee's Summit. As we leave the Kansas City area, we are now on one of the oldest sections of Interstate in the system. You can tell, too, this route has all sorts of weird quirks that Interstates today could not get away with. All quirks aside, in Blue Springs we meet Missouri State Route 7, and in Grain Valley we rejoin US 40, which shouldn't be a shock to anyone at this point. In Odessa, we meet Missouri Route 131, and in Higginsville, we meet Mo Route 13, one of the first roads I ever remember being on. In fact, 70 all across Missouri is one of the first interstates I remember being on during road trips as a kid, aside from Interstate 72, of course. From Higginsville, we meet State Routes 23 and 127 in Concordia and Sweet Springs, respectively, before junctioning US Route 65 south of Marshall. A few miles later, north of Pilot Grove, we meet State Routes 41 and 135 in the same exit. We then hit Boonville, where we lose concurrency with US 40, meet Missouri State Route 5, also meet Missouri 87, and finally meet Routes 98 and 179 just before crossing the Missouri River. Fun fact, this bridge is in the process of being rebuilt. Just south of Midway, we regain concurrency with US 40 again, and then enter Columbia shortly after. In Columbia, we meet four major routes. First, we have 740 Stadium Boulevard, next we have 163 Providence, and 763 Range Line. Finally, we meet US Route 63, although the exit to access 63 is less than practical. Next on the list of cities is Kingdom City, where we meet US Route 54. As someone who has traveled this part of I-70 many times, I actually recommend Kingdom City as a nice place to stop, especially if you're trying to avoid the busy exits of St. Louis and Columbia. Anyways, I keep getting off topic, sorry. Next, we meet State Routes 161 and 19 in New Florence. After that, we meet Route 47 in Warrington and then have exits in Wright City and Forestdale. Next, we have an interchange with a bunch of routes, all on the same exit. First, we have US 61, slash the Great River Road, slash the Avenue of Saints, north, followed by US 61, slash US 40, slash Interstate 64, south. 
Although the Great River Road and the Avenue of Saints both go unsigned, we still meet quite a few major routes. I've said it before, but from here, 70 is technically part of the Great River Road, though you won't actually find it signed anywhere. In O'Fallon, we meet Missouri Route 79, a sort of parallel to US 61. After this, we meet the not quite interstate Route Missouri 370, a bypass that starts in St. Peter's and ends at I-270 around Hazelwood. After 370, I-70 meets Missouri 94 in St. Charles, as well as Missouri 141 in Earth City and the aforementioned I-270 in Bridgeton. From here, we meet US Route 67 south of Hazelwood, as well as exits for the airport. In Berkeley, we meet what is technically I-70's only spur in Missouri, I-170. Now in downtown St. Louis, 70 acts as the southern end of Missouri Route 367. It then has a very squished exit with Missouri 115 before meeting the northern end of Interstate 44, losing concurrency with the Great River Road somewhere in this mess, and then abruptly turning east to cross the Mississippi River into Illinois. In East St. Louis, 70 immediately meets a huge mess of an interchange with Interstate 64 and Interstate 55, which results in I-70 and I-55 continuing northeast towards Troy. Next, 70 and 55 meet Illinois State Routes 203 and 111 in Fairmont City before junctioning Interstate 255 and State Route 157 in Collinsville. Outside of Troy, we meet State Route 159 as well as State Route 162 and, wouldn't you know it, US-40 quit on us again, and soon afterwards so does 55, continuing north to Springfield and eventually Chicago. I-70, now picking up where 270 East left off, continues free of any other routes, meeting state routes 4 and 143 in Marine, as well as 160 north of Highland. Outside of Pierron, US-40 comes back to 70 yet again, before exiting in the small towns of Pocahontas and Stubblefield, and also meeting state route 127 in Greenville. Did I mention US-40 left the concurrency again? Probably not, because it can't can make up its dang mind! Ugh. In Vandalia, we meet State Route 185 and US Route 51, as well as the Kaskaskia River. In Brownstown, we meet State Route 185 again, as well as US 40. From here, we pass through the settlements of St. Elmo, Altamont, and Funkhauser, which doesn't get an exit. Now, we gain a concurrency with Interstate 57, turning north to encircle the city of Effingham. Along the way, we meet US 40, Route 33, and US 45. Finally, I-57 heads north for Champaign, and 70 continues east towards Indianapolis. After Effingham, 70 exits in Montrose, Greenup, where we meet Illinois 130, Casey, Illinois 49, Martinsville, and Marshall with Illinois Route 1. Finally, we rejoin US-40 and cross into our next state. In Terre Haute, we meet US-41 and 150 on the same exit, and then, for what feels like the hundredth time, lose concurrency with US-40. In Brazil, the city, not the country, we meet Indiana State Road 59. Next, in Cloverdale, we meet State Road 243 and US-231. Finally, we meet State Road 39 in Center Valley and 267 in Plainfield before entering Indianapolis. Oh no, I'm having flashbacks to the I-74 video. The dreaded Indianapolis Beltway. Thankfully, I-70 doesn't join this mess of a road, only exiting with it before heading towards downtown. In downtown, 70 crosses the White River and then turns north and joins Interstate 65 for a short while. 70 and 65 continue through downtown Indianapolis, but 70 leaves and turns east again a few miles later. On the other side of Indianapolis, I-70 meets the Beltway again and continues out east to Greenfield, where there is an exit for State Road 9. Outside of Knightstown, we also encounter an exit for State Road 109. There are then exits for Newcastle, State Road 3, New Lisbon, Cambridge City, State Road 1, and Centerville. Now we enter Richmond. First, we have an interchange with US Route 35, followed by an exit with US Route 27, as well as an exit for State Road 227. Finally, we end our stay in Indiana by exiting with none other than US 40. You all knew this day would come. We had to arrive in Ohio eventually. Don't act like this is a surprise. Just keep your eyes on the road and it'll be over before you know it. We start off in Ohio by meeting a one-way exit with US 35. Guess there must have been a concurrency there I missed. This is shortly followed by the Ohio Welcome Center. A few miles later, we meet an exit with US-127, which takes you to Eaton. Next, we have exits for Lewisburg and Brookville. After this, we meet what looks to be an incomplete interchange with State Route 49. Now by this point, we've entered the Dayton metro area. Next, we have another exit for Route 49, this time a one-way. This is followed by an exit for State Route 48 for Englewood. After 48, there is a trumpet interchange for the Dayton International Airport, which is followed by an interchange for our last major north-south interstate, I-75. Make no mistake, 75 is not our last interstate, it's just our last main one that ends in 5. Followed by the 75 interchange are exits for Route 202, 201, and 235, all of which still serve Dayton. Finally, for the Dayton area, we meet Interstate 675, which weirdly turns into a regular surface road on its north end. 
675 is followed up by State Route 4, one-way exit, which is then followed by a cloverleaf interchange with US 68 outside of Springfield. Springfield has several other exits, including State Route 41 and US Route 40, which, might I add, hasn't rejoined 70 in a long time, so I guess it finally made up its mind. 70 then exits in the towns of South Vienna, Summerford, Lafayette, where we meet US 42, and Lake Darby. I-70 enters Columbus, Ohio by meeting the Beltway Interstate 270. Strange, I thought they would have gone the 470 route for a Beltway. From there, we meet Interstate 670 before beelining straight for downtown Columbus, where we meet and even become concurrent with Interstate 71, which coincidentally is the next episode. We also meet all of the U.S. routes shown on screen here. After leaving downtown, 70 meets Ohio Route 317 as well as Interstate 270 again. We then leave the Columbus Metro still paralleling U.S. 40 even after all this time. We exit in the towns of Etna, Kirkersville, and Luray. We also meet State Route 79 in Hebron. Alright, we've come a long way, so here's a rest area. Need a restroom break, or perhaps a refill on popcorn? Now's your chance to pause the video. Just kidding, this video is not long enough for that. We meet Ohio Route 13 in Jacksontown, and then have a half-made exit in Brownsville, followed by the other half of the exit in Gratiot. In Zanesville, we have an exit with US 40, as well as an exit with State Route 93. From there, there is an exit with US-22 and US-40 outside of Norwick, which is followed by an exit for New Concord. There are several exits in Cambridge, but the most important one by considerable margin is the exit with Interstate 77. 77 is yet another I in the 70s that we meet along 70's length. Come to think of it, 70 meets almost every interstate in the 70s. Past Cambridge, 70 enters the town of Old Washington, where US-40 finally rejoins I-70 in concurrency once again. 70 and 40 have an exit in Fairview, followed by an exit in Morristown, where 40 leaves the concurrency once more. That didn't last very long. 70 passes through St. Clairsville, having two exits with US 40 back to back, and then meets Interstate 470, and explains why the Beltway in Columbus is numbered 270. Past this, 70 has an exit in Bridgeport before leaving Ohio and crossing into our next state, West Virginia. After crossing the Ohio River, we are now in the city of Wheeling, West Virginia. We have exits with US Routes 40 and 250 before curving towards the south to have another exit with US 40 in Bethlehem. Past this, we have exits in Triadelphia and Valley Grove. That's all for West Virginia, now on to Pennsylvania. No, seriously. We enter Pennsylvania by meeting exits at West Alexander and Claysville. In Washington, Pennsylvania, not DC, we start by having an exit with Shocker, US 40. This is followed up by an exit with State Route 18 and the beginning of a concurrency with Interstate 79. 70 and 79 have an exit with US Route 19 before 79 breaks off to the south to go to Morgantown and 70 forges on towards the east. 70 has exits in Glide, Bentleyville, and Van Voris. Van Voris, that's an interesting name. This is followed up by Cloverleaf with State Route 43. We then cross the Monongahela River into Bella Vernon. This is followed by another Cloverleaf with State Route 51 and another river whose name I won't even try to pronounce. After that, there are exits in Turkey Town, Wyano, Yukon, and Madison. After this, we start a concurrency with Interstate 76 and officially join the Pennsylvania Turnpike. We nearly miss an exit with US 119 New Stanton and then have an exit in Denegal. This is followed by an exit in Somerset, which is used to access US 219. We then kind of exit with Interstate 99 and US 220 in Bedford before missing US 30 momentarily. Fear not, for we do meet US 30, although maybe you should fear, because this, my fellow road geeks, is where we meet the dreaded Breezewood Gap. For those who don't know, for some reason Interstate 76 and Interstate 70 in Breezewood don't have a direct access interchange. Instead, you have to travel over 1600 feet of regular surface road US 30 to connect back to I-70 South. Eventually this does happen, and thankfully we can stay true to the series name and actually talk about an interstate and not a two-lane road. Past the Breezewood, 70 has exits in Crystal Spring, Amaranth, and Warfordsburg, where we are joined by US 522. Past Warfordsburg, we travel south to cross into our last state. Now in Maryland, we have a lot of things happen really quickly. First we enter the town of Hancock, then we meet the eastern end of Interstate 68, which is immediately followed by a tightly packed exit with US 522 south, which leaves I-70, and then finally a sudden sharp turn to the east and a paralleling of the Potomac River. When meeting I-68, we also picked up US-40 again, however 40 leaves 70 a few miles later in Peckdenville. Following the 40 split, we have exits in Big Pool, Clear Spring, and Kemp's Mill before meeting Interstate 81 at a cloverleaf interchange in Williamsport. We also have another cloverleaf with US-40 at Funkstown. From here, 70 has exits in Myersville and Frederick, where we meet not only US Route 15, but also Interstate 270, our last 73-digit interstate. Past 270, we exit in Spring Ridge, New Market, Mount Airy, and Lisbon. In Cooksville, we meet State Route 97, and in West Friendship, State Route 32. We then have our last exit with US-40 in Ellicott City. Following that, we have a huge exit with US-29. 
Finally, after over 2,200 miles of roadway, 10 states, 9 pages of script, and over 100 audio takes, and more hours of animation than I can count on my fingers, we end at an interchange with Interstate 695 in Baltimore, Maryland. Actually, that's a lie, there's an exit with State Route 122 before 70 just turns into a park and ride. I-70 was meant to connect all the way to I-95 in downtown Baltimore, but freeway revolts meant that part of I-70 never got made. Which I understand why, but surely there could have been a better and more glorified way to end one of the most important interstates in the country than a park and ride. Anyways, between this video and the Great River Road, my right hand is officially a useless lump of flesh, so I'll see you in the next episode of Interstates I-71. As always, thanks for watching, and I look forward to making another season of Interstates, that is, once my hand heals.